we are going to look at the Prairie Food Web Energy Flow. We already know that a food web is a group of food chains that overlap and arrows show the direction of energy flow. Energy flow can be traced using arrows. I can see the energy going from a producer to a first level consumer, first level consumer to a second level consumer, second level consumer to a third level consumer, and so on. However, sometimes you might see food webs that don't use arrows to show what eats what. The energy flow has to be figured out by the user. So in science, we have to be problem solvers. Let's use our problem solving skills to learn more about this prairie food web. But first, let me tell you a little bit about it. One of my friends, a teacher friend, Mrs. Johnson, made this many years ago and I inherited it when she took a break from teaching. So it's really special to me and I've used it for many years. So we're gonna look at it today. Hey, hey. What was that? What is that? Hey, it's me, the food web. Food web, you're talking to me? Yeah, I'm talking to you. But you've never said anything to me before. Never had anything to say before. You know, my <laughs> okay. information speak for itself. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, I guess you're right here. Um, so what do you want to say? Well, I'm getting a little old, as you can see, so I'm thinking it's about time for me to hang it up. <laughs> hang it up? Aren't you already hung up on the wall? I am, but I think it's time for me to take a break teaching kids about this food web, bring in a newer, more advanced model. Yeah, well, they don't change that much over the years, but yeah, I, I understand. I can see that you're you're ripped in some spots and you lost your definition. You're kind of faded too. Hey. Sorry. <laughs> You've done a really nice job though, so thank you so much for teaching so many kids. I guess um, this might be your last hurrah then? I would say so, yes. All right, so then let's make sure we do it well so that everybody can learn from you for years to come. Sounds good. All right, let's go. And now, in its final performance, it's the Prairie Food Web. First, let's examine this Prairie Food Web close up to see what organisms are part of it. I see the fairy ring mushrooms. Those are, hmm, mushrooms are, oh yeah, they are decomposers. You can see some buffalo grass, that's a producer. A 13-lined ground squirrel consumer, a grass spider, a bull snake, a dung fly, western harvest mouse, field cricket, two-striped grasshopper, western harvest mouse, needle and thread grass, white prairie clover, bison, purple cone flower, side oats, gramma grass. Looks like we've got that Swanson's hawk, black-eyed Susans, and painted lady butterfly. This food web is different than the others. I see that there are no arrows. It's using string to connect what eats what. So we have to be detectives to figure out that energy flow. Let's find all the different parts of our food web before we trace that energy flow. So first is our producers. We've got the needle and thread grass. Looks like we've got some clover. We've got the side oats grandma grass, the black eyed Susan, purple cone flower, and the buffalo grass. Now, is that mushroom a producer? No, we know it's not a producer. We know it's a decomposer. It breaks down those dead things. So it's not a producer. It's not making its own food through photosynthesis. The rest of the organisms that we can spot are consumers. So we've got that mouse. We have got, let's see, that little cricket. We've got a grasshopper, a mouse, a dung fly, a bison. Looks like we've got that Swanson's hawk bull snake, spider, it's like a little squirrel, and our butterfly. Those are our consumers, the ones that eat to live. They all have mouths. Have you started noticing patterns as we move through different food chains and food webs? 
Look at the size of the consumers and what happens as they go up the food chain. So let's go ahead and trace our energy flow in the prairie food web. So let's find one food chain here. We're gonna start with the producer. We'll start with that grass there. Energy goes to that bison. And then what eats the bison? Hmm, nothing eats the bison. I know it looks like the hawk does, but that is actually something else. It looks like the fly. So uh, we have one food chain that is just grass and the energy goes to the bison and that is where it ends until those mushrooms break down those dead organisms. The mushrooms don't have any energy going to them in this food web, but we know that they break down any of those organisms when they are dead. We are gonna trace another food chain. So let's go ahead and start with that same grass and that energy is gonna go to the harvest mouse this time. Let's see that mouse gets that energy when it eats that producer. And then the snake eats the mouse but also the hawk. The hawk also eats the mouse. So the hawk and the snake are in competition with one another and we can see those additional food chains there. So we have the energy from the grass going to the bison. The grass's energy goes to the mouse and then the mouse's energy goes to the snake. But also the grass's energy goes to the mouse and the mouse's energy goes to the hawk. So that mouse's energy is either gonna go to the snake or hawk, whichever one gets it. Let's go ahead and look at another food chain in this food web. So I can see that black-eyed Susan, that's a flower. The energy is going to that squirrel when the squirrel eats it. And then the squirrel is eaten by that hawk. Oh, but also that painted lady butterfly eats that black-eyed Susan. So the flower's energy goes to the butterfly. The butterfly is eaten by that squirrel and the squirrel is eaten by that hawk. I'm noticing that as we go through those food chains, the size of each organism changes. Usually, the first organism to eat, our herbivores, are small, and then what eats that gets bigger and bigger. That can be a big clue when we're trying to figure out what eats what. All right, we can learn more from food webs, not just food chains. We're gonna go ahead and explore the importance of different organisms in this food web, too. We have discussed invasive species and endangered and extinct species. And if we look at a food web and decide, hey, let's take out one of our organisms. Like let's say we had a bad year and the grass did not grow because maybe there was a drought. What organisms would be affected if the grass was dead, if there was no grass? Well, anything that eats the grass, right? Would it affect the mouse population? Yes, it would affect the bison, he eats that as well. Um, is there anything else that is eating that grass? I don't see anything else eating that gra grass, but we could also say, so if there is not enough food for the mouse or the bison, they would have to either find new food sources or what would happen to their population? They would get smaller, there would not be as many. And if for the bison, there's nothing that eats it, so it wouldn't affect whatever is eating that, but it would definitely affect what eats the mouse. And um, that, that hawk eats the mouse, and the snake eats the mouse. So it would affect those two organisms. They would have to find a different food source. Now that mouse does eat that purple coneflower, so it does have another food source, but if we didn't have those grasses, it could totally limit that mouse. So, you know, taking one organism out of our food web can impact all of the organisms. We just looked at an example of what would happen if we took out that grass, that producer, and the impact it would have on this prairie food web. If we um, left that as is and decided to maybe take out a different organism, like the hawk, which is our top level predator, what would happen to all of those things that the hawk eats. The hawk eats things like the squirrel and the spider and the dung fly, and it looks like the mouse and the cricket and the grasshopper. There's another mouse there. All of those things that hawk eats. So if there was some kind of issue where maybe an invasive species came in and took out that hawk, or perhaps it went extinct and we didn't have that hawk, how would that impact those animals it eats? When those populations go up, you get a lot more. Um, this guy too, the, the snake, he would probably like that because some of those foods like the mouse he eats, 
um, he would have less competition. So he would be able to um, eat more mice without having that hawk around. So really, if we think about every single part of a food web, each part is very important because they all work together. All of these organisms in the food web truly depend on one another. Now let's review. A food web is made up of many food chains and shows the energy flow in an ecosystem. If arrows aren't present, we can figure out what eats what. We can use the size of the animals to help us figure it out. We observed that all organisms in an ecosystem rely on one another. Looking at each organism in a food web can help us understand that better. Like if we take one of the organisms out, it shows us the big impact on the others. Finally, we talked about being a problem solver. When you come across something you don't know, use what you know to try to figure it out. All right, that's all for me and the poster. Take care, peace.